the rates certified 11 years in a row. Good afternoon, Utah. I hope that you're having a wonderful Wednesday. It is going to be a warm and windy, windy Wednesday across the Beehive State. We're also going to continue to see increased runoff, so we'll keep a very close eye on any flooding concerns. The avalanche concerns, they do stick around as the avalanche warning in northern Utah will stick around through today. We'll be set to expire at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. But by tomorrow, a cold front will move in, and we're going to see some pretty big changes in our weather. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. We continue to watch the flood watch in northeastern Nevada. This continues through tonight. There's also a flood warning that's right along the Elko and Eureka County line. That's going to continue through 2 o'clock Pacific time. But as we make our way back into Utah, we do have a flood advisory currently in effect, and this is for Emigration Creek. Flooding caused by snow melt is expected, and the peak when it comes to how high Emigration Creek is going to get is expected just after midnight. So this is for Emigration Creek and the eastern portion of Salt Lake City from the East Salt, Salt Lake bench and areas downstream. This will remain in effect through midday tomorrow. But even though this is the only advisory that we have for Utah, we have seen reports of flooding basically up and down the Wasatch Front in isolated locations. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. And we'll go ahead and show you some of those flood reports. This was earlier this morning in North Ogden. This was via North Ogden City on Facebook where they actually had to close down one of the roads there. And in case We've been talking about it all morning where you had a backup in the sewer caused by likely that enhanced runoff creating all kinds of issues. This was shared by the Kaysville Fire Department just showing the washout in the road right there. Now as we transition to the avalanche warning that will continue again through six o'clock tomorrow morning. The high avalanche danger remains for the, both the northern mountains and the foothill areas. Make sure you're avoiding any slopes over 30 degrees. Stay clear of avalanche runouts and take those necessary precautions in the backcountry if you do plan on going into the foothills. But we also have some closures like Big and Little Cottonwood Canyon. You can't get up and down the canyon right now, and that's because of that high avalanche danger. This was shared by UDOT on Twitter, and this was from yesterday. I mean, how incredible is that? But these natural slides, they are occurring because of that high sun angle, these warm temperatures and strong winds creating widespread areas of unstable wet snow. But it's important to note that the ski areas are not included within that avalanche warning. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this, we have changes heading our way. High pressure has now moved well off to our east. There's a weak front in the northwestern portion of the state. It doesn't have a lot of energy right now, but you can see this dip right here. That's a trough coming in from the Pacific Northwest, and that trough combined with this cold front will get a little bit more energy as that system works its way towards us. And by tomorrow, the colder air will move in, and that front will also help produce a few showers. But in the meantime, though, mainly what we're seeing are those increasing clouds and the increasing winds, but still a beautiful early afternoon down in Moab at Red Cliffs Lodge as we're currently sitting at 76 degrees, but that's a beautiful view there. And spring skiing in full effect at Snow Basin as we have those high cirrus clouds and those temperatures very much so on the mild side of things. We're at 52 degrees in Logan, 51 degrees in Park City, 72 in Salt Lake. It's important to note in Salt Lake City, we didn't drop below the mid 60s last night, so it has been warm all day. 69 degrees in Provo currently, and we're sitting at 76 degrees in St. George. And for those daytime highs, we'll be well above our seasonal averages. Once again, just won't be quite as warm compared to what we saw yesterday. And a lot of that is thanks to that extra cloud coverage that we're going to see in that weak front sliding in right now. And then by tomorrow, we're going to be talking about temperatures significantly cooler than today by about 15 to 20 degrees in northern Utah and by about 10 to 15 degrees in southern Utah. Let's go ahead and take you through the future cast at 10 o'clock this evening. You can still see that front still stalled out in the northwestern portion of our area, but as that system works its way towards us, this will finally get some momentum. But by this evening and into tonight, I think the northwestern portion of the state will have a chance of seeing mainly valley rain and mountain snow, but the chance in northern Utah will ramp up even more as we get to around daybreak tomorrow, where again, this is mainly going to be valley rain and mountain snow, but with that colder air moving in, some of our typically colder valleys could actually start to see a little bit of snow early on. So it wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing straight snow around daybreak in Logan tomorrow. And then that chance holds on in northern Utah, including the Wasatch Front through the middle stretches of the morning. And as that colder air continues to filter in, maybe we start to see some of that rain transition over into snow. Now, if we do see snow along the Wasatch Front, not expecting anything significant, but that just kind of goes to show how colder, how much colder the air is moving in. But by tomorrow afternoon and evening, the bulk of the wet weather will move into the eastern portion of the state might be a little bit calm going from Thursday night into our Friday, but going into Friday, some trailing energy will lead to isolated showers in the northern portion of the state. So we can't completely rule out that chance as temperatures will still be below average. And when it comes to the accumulations, when it comes to our valleys in northern Utah, expecting mainly rain, but we could see maybe an inch with how warm the temperatures have been, though, not expecting anything really outside of those grassy surfaces. Benches, though, could see a trace to two mountain valleys at a trace to three inches and the mountains could pick up between two and eight inches of snow. So hopefully that helps kind of stabilize things a little bit after how warm it's been in recent 
recent days. And St. George will go from the low to mid 80s today into the low 70s for our Thursday, low 70s again for our Friday. But as a high pressure begins to build back in, we should be back in the low 80s by Sunday and Monday of next week. Then along the Wasatch Front, it's low to mid 70s for today. Some windy conditions, that chance of rain and snow for our Thursday. The best chance will be nearing the first half of the day. Slight chance on our Friday. Temperatures significantly cooler. Might not even get out of the 40s tomorrow in Salt Lake. But then it's 60s on Saturday and then back to the 70s Sunday into Monday.